Good morning everyone and at last the weather gods are giving us a break. The weather here in the UK is absolutely beautiful. We've got blue skies, quite a lot of cloud but I think it's all as well for a decent day. It was very sunny about half an hour, the, the clouds coming over but it's mild, it's a beautiful temperature. Just great for getting out in the countryside. Now before we continue today, at the end of the video, if you hang about, there's a little story, a little ghost story. I asked my subscribers to send in any stories they had of their experiences after I posted a story, a ghost story of my own, and someone did. So we're all going to hear it later. So hang about. Now today, we're actually going to talk about living slow. I know I don't like saying that, but it's actually an adjective that works. And living simply. We get the impression when we watch videos on YouTube that this is only for the artistic, the slightly hippie, the young, the eclectic, but it's not. It's for everybody, absolutely everybody, no matter who you are, where you are, how old you are, how many legs you've got, it's for everyone. Just have a look at yourself. Look down now. Look at you. Are you wearing a suit? Look around. Are you in an office? Are you in a field? Are you in a factory? Are you in a school? Are you in a university? Are you sitting at home? Are you retired? Look down. How are you dressed? What niche do you put yourself in? Are you working class? Are you middle class? Are you upper class? Do you see yourself as a blue collar worker? White collar worker? Manual worker? Self-employed? Does it matter? Does it matter one jot? No, it doesn't. This kind of lifestyle is for everyone. And I think that the projection through these videos on YouTube gives the impression that it's not. It gives the impression that it's only for those with art in the heart. Only for those who feel they are at one with nature. Only for those who can go out and bake cinnamon rolls whilst running through the fields in a flouncy dress and simultaneously supping gobfuls of herbal tea. It's not. It's for absolutely everybody, whether you're in your office or whether you're in your field, no matter where you are. Simple living is for everyone because it's all about working around your life. Life choices, employment wise especially, are something that we make fairly early on and then we stick to them. There's not a lot we can do about that. They're unalterable. They're there because we are working towards retirement, whether we like it or not. We are all working towards retirement. We go in every day just so we can make enough to have a pension and pay for a house so that we can retire. So there's nothing we can do about that. But we can live a simple, slow life around that. A lot of it's in the mind. We're hit by consumerism from every front all the time. People want our money. The thing is, we're not daft, are we? We know that people want our money. We know what the motives are. We know that we're being pushed to get a bigger car, have a more expensive holiday, wear nicer clothes. We know we're not stupid, but it's very seductive and we fall into the trap. We fall into the trap whether we know we, we can afford it or not because we have the credit card. But the credit card has to be paid back. It's all one vicious cycle. And I think that basically is the starting point. To live a slow and simple life is to pare down the most important thing in your life and the most important thing, the most influential thing, the, more, the thing that can bring you your joy or your grief or your headaches is money. We all know that, we're not stupid. 
and it's getting used to that. You work in a, say you work in an office environment with people, everybody's like-minded. Same in a factory, everybody's like-minded. We all want the best for us and our families. And the way we kind of, we've been programmed to get the best for us and our families is financially. But it doesn't have to be, does it? We all know this. We actually know it. We're not daft. We all know this. We know we're being sold a pop, but we take it in because we're human. It's what, it's what we do. But taking little steps, taking baby steps, everybody, in your suit and your tie and your nice haircut and your high pressure job, high pressure job, that's a bloody good reason for living a slow and simple life. Because I'll tell you one thing, now you live a slow and simple life, there's a more chance that you will have a long and slow and simple life. Not being dragged in by the big cell. Do you need that car? Does it matter what your peers think? Does it matter that the bloke on the next desk rolls up in a brand new EV? Does it matter? That you've got a five-year-old Fiat 500 like me. It doesn't matter one jot. Why do we think it matters? Because we've just been programmed. So I think the hardest obstacle towards living a slow and simple life is peer pressure. And peer pressure, when we talk about peer pressure, we always think about kids, don't we, at school. But well, peer pressure comes at any age. Right into old age, peer pressure. And it's getting away from that mindset. Does it matter? When people, if you don't go on that holiday that costs a grand more than your holiday is, and people come back and they're telling you about their holiday and they're kind of looking down on you a little bit, or they're telling you about the new car, or they're telling you about the great school that the kids are going to, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just try to just ignore that because it's all waffle. These people are no happier than you are. These people got no more pleasure than you did out of your holiday or your car or your weekend with your kids. They didn't. They didn't get one tiny jot more pleasure, and more satisfaction. So resist, resist. I think resistance is a good word actually. Resist the urge to get that new car because the chances are you're getting it on HP. You're getting it through a loan and that's gonna cost you. And then it puts, there's interest and it puts pressure on you to go out there and work. You can't have time off. You've gotta keep working and working and working to pay back that loan, to pay back that cycle of self-gratification, instant to compensate for the grind of your job, but just kind of get over that. And when you see less going out of your account, it's a fabulous feeling. I did this years ago. My bank account now, and even when I was working, and I never made much money. I made very, very little money in my jobs. I was on minimum wage most of the time. But when I look now at my account, I don't need to look at it to know what's going out and when. Because it's all up here, because there's so little. Oh, so, so little, but so few direct debits. You know, I've got the no normal things, like my heating, council tax, my phone, bits of things like that. But there's only about half a dozen. That's all there is. And it's just resisting that urge to be dragged in <laughs> To that cycle. Just baby steps, little bit. Save a penny here, save a penny there. It sounds stupid. It also sounds patronising because you know it. We all know it. So I sound like I'm patronising you, but I'm not because I know there's things that I want to do, there's things that I need to do, but it actually takes somebody else to remind me, to point me in the right direction. Otherwise I won't do it. Just resist and you'll find that if you can just cut down, 
I really do feel like this is the, the, it is patronising, but it, like I say, if you keep you fall into this trap, don't you? And you do it day by day, week by week, year by year. We go through it, we go through it, we go through it, and it's the norm, and it's difficult to get out of it. And it's just a case of saving a few quid. Don't get dragged into going on that really expensive holiday. Didn't actually need it. Do you need everything you're buying? Do you need that new gadget? You, you want it. It's, it's seductive. I look on Amazon, all sorts of things. I'm into cameras. I see things on there. It takes all the will in the world not to press that button because I want it desperately. But I don't need it. And when you see less going out, it kind of, less spending seems to me to bring, the less consumerism we do, or we get involved with, the easier it is to lead a slow and simple life. And once you start, and once you see the benefits in your health and your mental health, then it all becomes worthwhile. You start to see the benefits. It's difficult to live a slow and simple life if you're not living a slow and simple life. You have to get there and there's a process in getting there. And that process is paring down your spending for one, your expectations. Go for a walk in the countryside with your family rather than taking them out for an expensive meal, taking them to a fun fair, taking them to the cinema, taking them somewhere where you have to spend money. Take them out into the countryside, I guarantee you, if you've got kids, they will enjoy it or they will come to enjoy it. Because we did. As kids, we never went anywhere. We went into the countryside, spent all my time swimming in streams and throwing rocks about and running through fields acting the prop just like kids should so it's for everybody the simple life is for everybody don't just think it's for the eclectic hippie it's for everyone no matter who you are where you are you can live a simple life whilst maintaining any job any career that you're working to an end you can reach that goal and still live a simple life and you will feel better you will be happier it just you will I mean, it just works because stress and worry trying to keep up the rat race that is basically the sum total of everything that gives us stress brings us down it's money it's the need, it's the need for materials and they mean nothing. They mean absolutely nothing. Everything that brings you joy, everything that brings you pleasure and everything that brings you happiness is out there. It's all out there. And once you start, it's like when you go for a run. I used to do a lot of running. It's always hard work. That step out of the front door is always the hardest. But when you've been running for about five minutes and those endorphins start flowing, then it becomes like a drug. And living simply, living the simple life, living life in the slow lane is like that. It's like a drug. Once you start doing it, once you start getting enjoyment out of it, once you start seeing the merit of it, you want more. And it becomes a joy. It doesn't become a chore. It's not a case of giving things up. You aren't giving things up. You are letting things go in order for life to bring you things, to bring you happiness, peacefulness, wealth, but not financial wealth. It's for everyone. Don't think it's just for the hippie. Don't think it's just for the girl on the internet who's living some kind of weird, unattainable lifestyle. I don't know. I don't know whether to believe they are or not. 
but whatever they're doing. If that mask, that guise, that disguise of slow living works for them and they're happy, well then, it's good. And they're bringing people pleasure with the videos they make. It's a win-win for everyone. So it's not just for the hippie, it's for you, no matter how old you are. And we're going to talk about that in the future. About simple living. How it is for everyone. For the old, for the young. It's different. It takes different steps. But it's there and it's attainable and it's for everyone. I lived in a Victorian terraced house opposite the Victorian Cemetery in South East London, England. We lived upstairs and slept downstairs. One night I was sleeping in the bottom bunk in the room I shared with my sister and I heard a tapping noise next to me on the linoleum floor. As I sleepily opened one eye and kept my nose and mouth under the covers, I saw a pair of hobnail boots walk across the floor. No person, just boots. They walked straight past my bed and across the room. I closed my eyes tightly and went back to sleep. The next morning I told my mum what had happened. She told me that a lodger with big feet, who was actually known as Feet, had been a lodger in the house many years ago and lived and died in that very room. Thank you, Simone. I hope you enjoyed today's video and Simone's story. Please send yours in, then we can read them out for everyone else to hear. We shall see you on the flip. Peace and love.